stuff. I'm walking out the door. Listen to what he said to me. He said, so your minimum is 50,000. And I said, yes. He said, well, let me work on that. I said, all right, you work on that and you let me know. <laughs> so you see, if I, if I had agreed to his $20,000, then I mean, here's the thing though, folks, there's more money than you can use. There's more private money than you can use. If you're a real estate investor and are wondering how to raise and leverage private money to make more profit on every deal, then you're in the right place. On Raising Private Money, we'll speak with new and seasoned investors to dissect their deals and extract the best tips and strategies to help you get the money, because the money comes first. Now here's your host, Jay Conner. Roland, welcome to everybody to our to our live Zoom training on private money. Today's topic is, well, I promoted today's topic as seven questions a private lender will ask you before they fund your real estate deal or deals. And it's actually not seven questions. It's actually nine questions. I thought it was seven questions, but it's nine <laughs> questions. Now, how in the world do I know that these are the questions that a private lender will ask you before they fund your deal? Well, uh, Crystal, uh, are, are Willie and Haruna here by chance or no? Um, I thought I saw them, but I'm not sure. Give me just one second here. Well, if you see them show up, let me know. No, I don't see them here. Okay. Well, if you see Willie or Haruna show up, let me know. So here's how I know. Chaffee, I know you want to know how I know. So I'm going to tell you, Chaffee, how I know. 100% for sure what they're going to ask putting aside the fact i've been answering private lender questions ever since 2009 when i started borrowing private money from private lenders but these are hot off the press here's how i know i did a live webinar with willie and haruna they are platinum and mastermind members i did a live webinar with them day before yesterday and they had at least the last count I saw, they had at least 17 new potential private lenders on their webinar that they invited, by the way, one of the best webinars I've ever done. I mean, fantastic engagement, great questions. Well, guess what? I'm going to share on this private money training right here, right now on this zoom the nine questions that the potential private lenders asked during the webinar. So I don't have to guess what's on the top of these people's minds. I mean, I went to Brenda's office. I said, Brenda, pull up that webinar I did on Monday and read out to me all the questions that the private lenders ask. And so I got them. I'm going to share them with you. So since, since private, since new private lenders were asking these questions 48 hours ago, I would say it's a pretty good idea for you to write these down and make sure you've got your answer ready to go when they ask you these questions and they're interested in funding. By the way, nobody's going to ask, no potential private lender is going to ask you a question unless they're interested in loaning you money. I mean, right? I mean, questions, that's a buying signal. People don't ask questions about what you're doing unless they're interested in what you're doing, right? So love the questions. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Now, this list is not exhaustive. These are not all the questions that a private lender will possibly ask you. Uh, there's other questions. Uh, in fact, um, we'll talk about that. If we have time, what other questions that Crystal's been asked, chavi has been asked, some of our platinum members, uh, mastermind members have been asked by, um, by new private lenders. So be sure you got a pen and a pad handy wherever you take your notes, 
because this is going to be some very, very, very valuable information. Uh, by the way, I'm curious. I see uh, Jay Mora here from uh, North Carolina, fellow North Carolinian. So, Jay, unmute. Let us know where you at in North Carolina. Hey, brother. How are you? I actually, Fantastic. I actually don't physically live in North Carolina. I do own rentals uh, right outside of Charlotte in Mint Hill. I do a lot of business in North Carolina. So uh, I'm a high volume disposition wholesaler in the state. Also, fix and flip is my jam. I've been a contractor going on eight years now. And I started the real estate business in 2014 as a realtor. And I got out of it full time as a traditional realtor. After I bought a deal from a wholesaler, the wholesaler made $85,000 on the deal. I made 7,000 on the flip and I got, I got the bug. I was like, how did this guy do it? And so I got uh, heavily involved in that. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, by the way, um, you said, how long you've you been wholesaling, did you say? Wholesaling full time, going on two years now. And how long you've been real estate investing? Since 2014. Well, that's 10 years ago. So all I can say is you don't look old enough to be investing for 10 years. You must have started when you were 12, right? Started when I was 18. I love it. I love it. Y'all give a great big fancy golf clap to Jay Mora right there for <laughs> starting. I, you know, I wish I had started investing when you started investing, and I wish I knew then what I now know. Anyway, w welcome to the Zoom today, Jay. Uh, glad to have you. Um, so, so Chaffee and Crystal, I'm going to bounce off of uh, you all. Uh, so I want you all, so everybody here, I want you to write these questions down. Now, some of these answers or some of the answers to, to some of these questions are going to depend obviously on your market. It's going to depend on your market, uh, and the kind of deals that you do, but I want you to be ready to answer these questions when you get asked a question by a potential private lender, just to make sure everybody understands. We're talking about private lenders. I mean, my wife, Carol Joy, and I, we got 47 private lenders right now that are funding our deals by all means. And for goodness sakes, you don't need 47. You just need one or two to start. But um, the, these questions are real questions that just came in. So uh, ladies first, Senorita Crystal there. <laughs> ladies first. Um, so let's say, so Crystal and Chavi, here's the way we're going to do this. Let's pretend that I am a new potential private lender. We haven't done business yet. You've taught me your program. You've taught me, you know, what it is. You've told me the interest rate that you're going to pay, et cetera. Uh, you've told me the length of the note. I know how I can get my money back in case of an emergency. You've gone through the PowerPoint presentation. You know all those answers already. But now I got some other answers, I mean, questions that you didn't tell me about when we went through the program. So here we go, Crystal, first one. All right, Crystal, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of interested here in investing in your deals, loaning, loaning your money on your deals. But I really want to know, how soon can you invest my money? So I'm going to sidebar for just a second <laughs> because this is – it, it's going to depend. So I'm not going to say it depends necessarily to that person, but I am going to sidebar and say it's going to depend. So if this is somebody that needs to move um, funds over to a self-directed IRA, I'm going to ask them that question um, so that I can determine what does my timeline look like. And if they're liquid, obviously, I know that they're probably fairly ready avail readily available, as well as it's going to depend on how much they have to invest. So now going back to if I were just to directly answer Jay, I would say, are your funds in a um, invest? Are they investment capital? Are they something that's going to need to be moved to a self-directed IRA or are they liquid? Uh, actually, they're both. I've got investment capital that is just sitting in my savings account, ready to go. But I'm not happy getting the returns on my retirement funds either. I've, I've got them in the stock market, and I'm just sick and tired of the volatility. So I've got funds as well that are retirement funds that I would like to, um, you know, invest as well. Yeah, so your liquid capital, we can invest as quickly as um, we're able to locate a deal that 
meets the criteria for the loan to value and the amount of money that you have. And those that are in um, that are investment capital right now, it's just really a matter of us setting up a conference call with the, my rep at Quest so we can have a conversation and determine your next steps with those. So, you know, when can you set that up? Let's let's go ahead and make sure that we can get that on the books. I'll get in touch with them. We'll identify a time. And then it's really a matter of how long it takes for that transfer to occur. And as soon as the transfer occurs, then we can get those invested and start working with those as well. Okay. Very good. Um, Chaffee, same role play here. Uh, how soon can you invest my money? <laughs> well, I, you know, again, I love what, and, and hit, this is more of a strategy than an answer, Jay, only I'm going to share the strategy and, and exactly what Crystal did is that usually when somebody asks you a question like that, the best way to answer them is with a clarifying question. So as Crystal said, you know, how much, like how fast can you, uh, invest my money, I would do the same thing and and really, you know, say how fast are you looking to invest your money, right? So really, you know, go back to them and, and find out what they're looking for, what they're searching for, because typically when somebody is looking, asking a question, right, they're looking for some kind of answer. And um, you want to make sure that you're answering the question that they're actually asking versus just throwing out a number out there. So, so that's really the strategy, and and the bottom line is, uh, you know, as Crystal said, it, first of all, is it um, readily available investment capital or is it retirement funds? And uh, the answer is, you know, if it's readily available cash, then as as soon as we find a deal that fits the investment criteria to make sure that you're protected, we're going to put that money into play. Hmm. So let's continue the role play, Chevy. Um. Well, I've got money ready to go and you know, I don't want to be sitting around three months for you to find me a deal. So based on your, uh, experience there, Chaffee, and you're doing deals, um, you know, how long do I need to sit on this before I can really expect, you know, getting it to work? Well, again, you know, market conditions are going to, um, affect that your local market conditions and, and if you've been following Jay and doing what Jay does, you know, you've already started looking for deals. And so, you know, some of you I know already have deals and are looking for money. Obviously, you know, that's not something that um, uh, we discuss right away. Uh, and those of you that don't have deals yet, man, hit that road. You're like, like, find a deal. The sooner the better, right? So the answer to that investor, though, is, uh, is, is again, the same thing is, you know what? We're going to get looking for a deal as soon as this meeting's over. I want to make some phone calls and uh, we're, we're going to find that deal for you and get that money working as soon as possible. I don't want you all to miss what both Crystal and Chaffee did. They did not allow my question to box them in a corner. They did not commit to saying, well, I can probably put it to work in 30 days. They didn't say I can do it in two weeks. They didn't say three months because truth be told, you really don't know, do you? I mean, you know what? I mean, if you've been investing, you know, on average, how often you're getting a deal on a contract, but history doesn't repeat itself. So by the way, Chaffee, you should run for president because you did an excellent job three times, not answering my question. <laughs> That's right. Uh, but you made me feel warm and fuzzy about your answer. <laughs> Well, and, and may I add as well, Jay, the thing that you need to know yourself as the investor is you need to know timelines. One, you know, what does your pipeline look like on average? How many is it, you know, how much time is it taking you to get a deal based on your marketing? You need to know how long it's going to take at the attorney's office to get your title work done, to get these, these things to a close, because you are going to have to mentally build that in as you're, as you are communicating. So if somebody does push you further and try to get you to get to a timeline, you want to be able to give them some, some kind of an average so that they know. So if you happen to have something that's under contract and you know how long it takes at the attorney's office, and then you can be talking to them about, you know, if that fits that deal. So, you know, but you gotta, you gotta know your numbers. So know your timelines as well. Cause if you don't, then you're really just going to be like, that's so true. So true. 
Uh, and, and also, did you notice what Chaffee said in answering my question when he really didn't answer my question, but he did answer my question when he said, we're going to be looking for you a deal immediately right away to match the criteria of maximum loan to value and all the criteria of the program that I've already shared with you. So what did he do? He looped back in his answer, giving me, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Giving giving me security, giving me a warm and fuzzy that I'm just not going to get you. I'm not just not going to put your money to work for the sake of putting your money to work. I'm going to invest your money and at the same time make sure you are protected as I've already taught you you're going to be protected. So excellent job there, Crystal and Chevy. All right, so let's continue the role play. Number two question, back to Crystal. And I'm telling you, Every private lender asked me this. In fact, Mike Connolly, at the studio today, when I finished recording, the owner of the studio said, well, if somebody had $20,000, just hypothetically speaking, um, what would you do with that $20,000? And so he, a roundabout way, was asking this question, Crystal. Is there a minimum amount to invest? Actually, I do have a minimum amount because, you know, typically we have to have a certain amount, even if we're going to do a rehab. However, how much do you have to invest? So do you see what Crystal just said? She is doing what Jesus did. She answered a question with a question and what Chaffee just preached a little bit about. So she threw the ball back in my court. By the way, there's already a trend going on here, and we haven't even finished the second question, and that is you answer questions with what Chaffee said, and that's clarifying questions. So uh, Crystal said back to me, well, she said, well, do you, do you have a particular amount in mind? Um, no, not really. Okay. Well, generally we start at around 30,000. However, I'm often able to work with people, even if they have a smaller amount, maybe they're close. And so we can still work together or they may have a smaller amount, but, but maybe they have a son, a daughter, a grandchild, a spouse that they wanna put those funds together with. So we don't ever pool funds. So we wouldn't do that with a stranger or anyone else, but we can put you on the same note. So sometimes it's just a matter of you partnering with a family member so that both of you can take advantage of the program and get those high rates of return safely and securely. And we can get your money working for you that way. So did you all notice what Crystal just did? See, what she did was she said her minimum is 30000 but she didn't want to run the risk of me not having 30,000. So what she said was we can put monies together from, you know, family members and et cetera, in order to reach the minimum. And so what she was doing was mitigating the possibility of me saying, oh, well, I don't have that, blah, 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 blah. She answered that before it was even, you know, uh, an issue. Um, same question, Chavi. Is there a minimum amount to invest? And, and again, you know, depending on where you're investing, you know, your, your minimums are going to be different. So, uh, you know, we had a, a mastermind student where he could buy a house for 15000 and his rehab costs were anywhere between fifteen to 20000 So all in, he'd have, you know, $30,000, $35,000 on a house that's worth seventy five to $100,000. Um, and then obviously in Charlotte, you got houses that are half a million. So... 15 grand ain't going to do jack squat. So your minimums might be a little bit higher, right? So so with that in mind, obviously know your target market, know your area um, to determine what your minimum is. And I always go back to, uh, you know, as Crystal said, so, you know, what did you have in mind? Did you have a particular amount in mind? And if they came up with a really low minimum, let's say my minimum was 30,000, and uh, they had a, a twenty or twenty-five thousand. I would do a follow-up question and say, "Hey, if I sat down and and came up uh, with some suggestions and ideas, you think you might be able to come up with a little bit more?" Uh, as Jay says, they they always have more. And <laughs> the question is, you know, what what is the the minimum necessary for them to get started to test, feel you out, test you out? And and so if you can sit down again and and offer some suggestions, offer uh, some methods. 
they might have, you know, 30 or 40, they might have 50,000 and they only want to start with the 25,000. So, um, so that's again, going back with the clarifying questions and then just prodding them for, you know, what, what is really going on here? Along with that, uh, just to let everybody know, where do we come up with these minimums? So, you know, crystal in all likelihood is not going to be able to buy a house for $30,000. That's her minimum. Um, but she's not gonna buy a house typically for $30,000. So where is she getting her minimum from? She's getting her minimum from what she is willing to accept for renovation or rehab money. That's where she's getting that dollar figure is for renovation or rehab money. And that, that private money can be in a junior position, a second lane underneath the first position, private money that would be used for the purchase of the property. So when you're, when someone's asking you your minimum amount, don't tell them your minimum based on what you're buying properties for. You want to have your minimum set at what your average or minimum amount of money you would accept for renovations. And I just said something that I don't want anybody to miss. It's no problem having more than one private lender secured by the same property, which what you got to watch out for is the maximum loan to value. So if you've got more than one private lender being secured by the same property, be sure and add up both notes, private lender in first position, private lender in second position, get that total amount, divide all your notes by the after repaired value of the property. And you don't want that to exceed more than 75%. That's called 75% total loan to value of the after repaired value. I didn't say 75% of the purchase price. So a maximum of 75% of the after repaired value. Uh, third question. Oh, go ahead, Chavi. Did you have I was going to say, let me just add to that, Jay. We've had several students, and I know Crystal does this quite a bit as well, is that, you know, if you have a smaller amount, let's just say 20000 instead of, you know, 100000 um, sometimes if you're working foreclosures and you're buying properties subject to the existing note, you know, that 20000 they might only need 10000 to bring the note current. Um, and then, you know, so, so you might be able to do a smaller amount if you're doing a strategy like a subject to, and just be aware that, uh, again, know your market and know your strategy. If you've never done a subject to before, um, you know, don't use that as a minimum as your basis, right? So, uh, and, and again, if you have, then, then that's an option for you. Thank you, Chavi. All right, Crystal, third question. Uh, that was real live, real live question here uh, this week. So, Crystal, I'm, I think, I think I'm, I'm interested in uh, investing with you and, and loaning you money on your deals. But where are the property? Oh, by the way, before I have you, before we do that role play, I got to tell you all what happened to the studio owner uh, this morning when I was recording Mike Connolly's uh, audio. So he said, hypothetically, hypothetically, when everybody tells you something's hypothetical, trust me, it's not hypothetical. All right. So he says to me, hypothetically, let's say somebody had $20,000, you know, what, what, what could you do with that? And so, you know, we had our conversation, but he found out my minimum is 50,000. And I said, my minimum is $50,000 here in the, here in my market. And I said, and here's why I said, the re I said, that's just not an arbitrary figure. I said, the reason my minimum is $50,000 is because I have to pay Julie Wickheiser attorney. Who's right next door to our office. Uh, I have to pay her the same $650 in closing cost and dot prep fee, whether I'm borrowing 500,000, 250,000, 50,000 or 20,000. And that was my reason uh, that I gave him, which is true. And so we, st you know, we started talking about other stuff. I'm walking out the door. Listen to what he said to me. He said, so your minimum is 50,000. And I said, yes. He said, well, let me work on that. I said, all right, you work on that and you let me know. <laughs> so you see, if I, if I had agreed, 
to his $20,000 that, I mean, here's the thing though, folks, there's more money than you can use. There's more private money than you can use. And you see Jay, my buddy Jay with my same name, Jay in North Carolina, who's not in North Carolina. If Jay had all that private money that I can plug him into, he wouldn't even be wholesaling that deal right here on this zoom with everybody else. <laughs> exactly. Right, right, right. <laughs> I mean, let me tell you, you know what my average profits are right now, Jay, my average profit per deal. And I'm not bragging. It's some, this is data, not drama. This is data, not drama. All right. $82,000 per single family house. But the only reason it's $82,000 is because I got private money available. Right. But anyway, picking on my new buddy, Jay. All right. Back to the role play there, um, Crystal. Um, so I'm, I'm interested in investing with you. Right. But where are these properties that you're investing in? So I purchased properties in Virginia Beach, Chesapeake, Portsmouth, Isle of Wight County, Suffolk. So kind of all over Hampton Roads in southeastern Virginia. And I have a few properties that are in North Carolina. So you don't pretty much invest outside your area? No. Chaffee, let's role play the same question. Well, Chaffee, I'm... I'm pretty interested in, you know, doing business with you, loaning you money on, on your deals, but where are the properties uh, that you're investing in? Where are they located? So Jay, you know, um, I've bought and sold properties in multiple different states, uh, over 10 different states, as a matter of fact. And, and you know, the funny thing I found out, I found out that a brick in Arizona is pretty much looks exactly the same as a brick in Florida. <laughs> like A brick is a brick. And so my, what's important to me is to make sure that the, property fits the right criteria and your money is protected. As long as I can find a property that fits that and I can ensure that your money is going to be protected, um, then I'm going to do a deal. So I want you all to dissect and unpack both Crystal and Chaffee's answer. The answer is the truth, <laughs> right? The answer is the truth. The answer is always the truth. If you're only investing right around your area and that's the business decision you've made, then that's your answer. If you're investing in other markets and not right around in your area, then that's what you tell them. But do you see what Chaffee did in a very, very soft way? Chaffee justified why he is able to invest outside of his area because what you don't know is you don't know why the person is asking the question, but I can guarantee you here's partly why they're asking. They want to feel secure about their money and they want to make sure that you know the market that you are investing in because at the end of the day, private lenders are really not investing in your properties. It's secured their loan amount, their principal loan amount is secured by the property, but they are not investing in your properties. What are they doing? They're investing in you. That's what they're doing. They're in are you feeling inspired by the knowledge you gained in this episode? Then head over to jconner.com slash money guide. That's j c o n n e r.com slash money guide and download your free guide that shares seven reasons why private money will skyrocket your real estate investing business right now. Again, that's jconnor.com slash money guide to get your free guide. We'll see you next time on Raising Private Money with Jay Connor.